And I usually tell young people, you know, marry, your fr marry somebody you know is a friend. Because if you are not friends, many years later, or even some time later, you know, because issues arise in marriage, differences arise. But when you are friends, you are able to sort out those differences. You know, casually, you are able to even, you know, talk about it and pray about it. Uh, but if you are not friends, then it becomes very, very hard to understand each other, to be patient with each other. Mm -hmm. So I would advise the young people, and that's what, you know, that's my advice to them. Marry somebody you can relate with freely. Whether you disagree, you still remain friends. Whether you have, you know, any difficult issues arising in your marriage, when you are friends, you still stick together and sort out those, you know, uh, issues together. Well, hello there and Bona Yesu Asifiwe. What a great joy, honor, and privilege it is to have you yet one more time. My name is Brian Mashigadi, and this is Harvest Conversations. We're so happy to be with you one more time. I hope that you've been well, that your week has been victorious. We've just been, you know, leaning in and gleaning from the teachings from our last session. If you haven't caught that yet, you can go back to our channel just a little bit back, just a little bit back to some of the uploads we've been doing on Harvest Conversations. You can look for the playlist here and see how you may be able to learn from us and from the guests that we've been having on set. If you are new here, this is a platform where we talk real, raw, authentic conversations that are concerning topics that have to do with the youthful believer. And this is Deliverance Church International. Kasarani Nzimaman, also known as the DCIKZ. And we are so glad to have you yet one more time. As has been our culture, please share this link with as many people as you can. Let them know that we are on. Let them know that we are doing this. If you'd like to reach out to us for any question to give your life to Jesus, you want some um, some clarity on something that you've had here, please reach out to those numbers at the screen or coming to you on your screen right about now and let us know how we may be able to be of help to you. Without much further ado, we want to get into our new uh, theme for this season. We've just come from looking at relationships. Now we want to look at purpose. <laughs> purpose. But how do you say that word? Purpose. Is it purpose or is it purpose? Pur purpose? It's purpose. I think it's purpose. <laughs> purpose. P-U-R-P-O-S-E. That's what we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be looking at many things inside there. So um, with me in, on set, I have um, two amazing young gentlemen. They're going to be introducing themselves. They're going to let you know who they are, what they do, and then we're going to pick the conversation on from there. But I can let you know before we go too far, it's about to go down. And I am not mad about it. Right, right to the man in the middle. I want to allow you to karibisha you and to introduce yourself. Let us know um, who you are and what you do. Uh, thank you for having me here. My name is James Kimani, and I'm a digital marketer and also a brand influencer. I love dancing and I'm passionate about events. Above all, I love God. Yes. That's who he is and what he does. Throughout the conversation, you might hear us call him Kimu. That's the other name that he goes by. And that's how you can reach him on social media, on Instagram at... At Kimu. K-E-Y-M-U-H. That's right. At Kimu. Ki Yafuguro. Alafu M-U-H. All right. And to the gentleman in the far right, uh, introduce yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Karibu sana. All right. Uh, my name is Ian Gatere. And uh, I do a couple of things, so I should say everything. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm an entrepreneur um, with also very keen interest in the events um, business. And uh, yeah, I think we'll get into it as we delve deeper, you All right. know? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ian and Kimu, for being our guests today. Have a have us conversations. Um, and we just want to. Just, you know, just dive into it. What is purpose? When we say purpose, what comes to your mind? What is your understanding? 
of purpose. I'm going to throw that question to both of you. What, what is it about? Okay, so based on my understanding of what purpose is, purpose is what, when you come to understand the reason as to why you are brought into this world. So what is, exact, what is the assignment that you need to accomplish? Like having an understanding of why you came to this world and what you need to do, to do, to, to do before you leave this world. That's your purpose. Like having something that you, you, there is every single day that when you wake up, there is something that you feel like you need to do. Like the reason as to why you, maybe your heart beats. Like we all have our hearts racing every single time, but there is that one reason that you know deep inside you that you need to do before you leave this place. Mm -hmm. That each and every single time you feel it inside. You don't know what placed it there or who placed it there, but you have it every single time. So in a nutshell, I'll say purpose is something that you need to accomplish, something that was placed inside you that needs to be accomplished. Purpose is something that is on the inside of you that needs to be accomplished, begs to be accomplished. It's the reason um, of why you're here, something that you need to do. Thank you for that. I think that's really profound. Um, Ian, purpose. Purpose. Um, you see, for me, um, maybe I'll take a broader approach. You see, purpose is so, what would I say? It's diverse. You can't really explain it in... Uh, a simple sentence, you know, you can, but you can't really like contain it into just one thing. For example, I might say, uh, but it's basically just reason. Let me stop um, <laughs> putting people at the edge of their seats <laughs> and all of that. Uh, purpose is basically reason, you know, um, the reason for which something is created. Um, so the purpose of a mobile phone is to connect people who are far away. The purpose of your stomach is to digest food. Um, purpose is reason. So when it goes to your life, the purpose of your life is the reason why you were created. So the purpose of this microphone is to amplify my sound so that I can be heard through a speaker. So purpose is multifaceted in that way, in that it just boils down to reason. So the reason for which something was created or made, you know? Yeah. Wow. The reason for which, I think that's a really simplified definition. When you think about the things around us and why they exist, I mean, nobody ever, ever in the world, nobody ever, um, thinks, oh, I want to be a photographer. Then you think, oh, let me buy a remote you know, or, oh, I want to be, uh, I want to, you know, uh, I don't know, drive, like, oh, okay, let me buy a microwave, you know. Um, you, you get things uh, for the reason which you want to use them. I think that's what yes. both of you are saying. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about why something was, uh, the reason which something was, is supposed to, or the function which something is supposed to accomplish, mm -hmm. and then the reason which uh, something exists. Uh, I think that's, that's very um, out there. I think it's a very plain definition yeah. of the word purpose. I think if you're looking to demystify what purpose is, right there, we already have it. That right at the beginning, purpose is the reason for which, the reason for why. Um, uh, I, I want us to then think to ourselves, what are some of these common misconceptions that we have in this day and age, in our generation? Uh, misconceptions about purpose, you know, things that we think about purpose that are not true, that are not real, that have been handed down from generation to generation, and sometimes we believe them and they sound like they're true, but they really aren't. Mia? Yeah. Uh, will you start? Okay, we are doing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so uh, thank you, bro. The first misconception I would start with is... Um, <laughs> You may think that your purpose will be found out or discovered by you following each and every word of your parents or mentors. But it's, there's the place of obedience and there's a place where you really have to function with your brain and think about what you're being told to do. Because I believe from the deepest core of our hearts that we have 
a sense of what you were created for. Even before somebody tells you what you're supposed to do, you do have a sense of it because you feel comfortable around it. So um, the first misconception, what I'm trying to say is uh, when you expect the outer environment to tell you what you're supposed to be doing in terms of parents and mentors, they may guide you, but ultimately you're the one who makes the decision. Wow, let me just get get on that for a minute. Um, um, that that is a common misconception where we think our purpose will be brought about by other people. That's what you're saying. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and why that is a misconception you're saying is because uh, purpose is an innate thing. Yes. Iko mle mlendani mlendani kabisa So it's it's not a thing that other people I like um, the 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 point you brought across. But there is a place for obedience and there is a place for parents and mentors and so on and so forth. But eventually, ultimately, at the tail end, um, when all is said and done, mm -hmm. it sits on you yes. to find purpose. Wow. All right. A common misconception number two. Common misconception number two. Uh, I, this is something that we, you know, we are in, living in the digital space and the digital world so much. So sometimes you might be on YouTube just listening to your worship song. You know these things happen. Then an ad just pops up. How to make one million dollars through your purpose and everything. Then you think that actually the coach can actually teach you on how to get your purpose. I'm going to say this with something that happened to my life. Uh, so for instance, like there is no way, like he just said, you, you, you can't really, for, for me what I know is you can't really buy yourself to purpose. Purpose is something that you do gradually. It's a step-by-step -step thing. For instance, the only way you can actually live or start to know what your purpose is, is by you starting. That's a word that he gave me in 2020. I remember, uh, I, I usually look up to him like a mentor. I honor this guy. So I asked him, uh, we were just having conversation to re during the COVID season, we are all locked in when we're doing nothing, and I asked, uh, and some of the things that you're telling me is this, you just need to start. Whatever you need to, to do, just start. Because after you've started, that's when you can start thinking about problems. You know, when you think about problems before you start, they are not real problems, they are just illusions. And the same thing applies to purpose. So when you start is when you can actually get to understand things. So when you get a mentor, or maybe not a mentor, a, a coach online telling you that you can buy purpose or something, it is based on how they think. So it's a misconception that they're trying to implant into your mind. And you'll, you're, you're going to continue carrying the knowledge of them, but not yours. So it's a misconception that I see to my end. Well, yeah, you guys are deep. Um, I mean, do you guys feel like you need some water? Because this is... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Um, there's something you said about starting. Uh, you hear it. You can hear it from people and you might think, oh, oh wow, this coach is so great. Especially, especially, it's always the YouTube ads, guys. Oh, It's man. always the YouTube. Let me tell you, I was watching something um, just this morning as I was getting ready. And then I usually don't watch. I, I, I'm, I'm a skipper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. But I'm <laughs> a skipper of ads. But to, I, I was getting ready, so... The ad came and I wasn't in a position to go and change, so I just listened to it. And they were talking about something, some, some great big um, technology. Was it NFTs or something like that? And this guy was talking about amounts of money. Yo, this guy bought a pixelated image for just, I don't know, $1,000. And in just a short time, in, in, was it in... It was in a few months, it became 300 and I don't know what it... it like it was multiplied, like the profit was like 360 times what he put in. Mm. 1,000 was put in and he got in a few months 300. And I was like, oh my God. So I turned around, I was like, I'm a, maybe I'm supposed to be like a financial analyst. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I'm already, I'm, you know, I'm, it's always the YouTube ads. But then maybe it's not YouTube for you. Maybe it's the people around you. Because we are creatures of comparison, whether we like it or not, uh -huh. I think. Yeah? Um, and I may sit here with you guys, and you guys are thriving in what you're doing. And um, I'm thinking, you guys are also young. I'm like, I'm a maybe. I'm a maybe. Eh. I'm a maybe. <laughs> but I love especially that you said, 
about beginning where you are. There's something that Bishop Kimani says, um, think big, start small, begin now. All right. And I want us to just um, pick it up from there as we are thinking about some of those misconceptions that we have already had about, um, about purpose. Before, before I move to the next question, do you have another misconception about, about the area of purpose? I think you already said it, uh -huh. comparison, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know why. And you see, you see, we are talking about YouTube mm -hmm. and how it's supposed to help us as a tool. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of motivational speakers telling, don't compare yourself. I don't know why we keep doing that because they keep telling us not to do that. But I think it's something that is somewhat maybe programmed inside of us. Like when your parents are um, comparing you to someone else, it becomes embedded inside your subconscious. So you do it. But basically comparison, yeah, it might make you veer off track very easily because you... Um, uh, like when you see somebody has opened up, uh, this example is given so many times. So um, somebody is driving with smokies in my eyes, and you're like, I can do that. Yeah. What do you mean? Sini makatu and I, what do you mean? Nakotu niapa? Nanda nacho matu ile muti. Napata maka. Eh? So you see, you start, ah, me, I'm starting, and probably you were doing something. That will probably, you know, yeah, yeah. become something big. And you're here battling with smokies and my eye. See no bayana smokina my eye. Atuna ubaya. Biggest fans of street food. Oh, sometimes, not every time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I, I saw that cringe. I, no, 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 it's not a cringe. It's just like, you know, I'm hungry, guys. Feed us. Um, <laughs> send your smoky donations to the Harvest yeah. Conversation. Oh, my goodness. Because we are harvesting nothing <laughs> but hunger. Hunger. Oh, man. What a time to do this. Um, could you just carry a bit on comparison? Mm -hmm. And maybe as we are looking at the journey of our purpose, I think comparison is one of those stealers of joy. And not joy alone, it, it just breeds delay and it pulls us back. If you look back into your own personal lives, maybe I'll start with Kimu here. If you look back into your own personal life as you're thinking about purpose, do you have time times or an instance maybe where you thought this was it, especially because you looked at somebody else, either your age or somebody who had gone ahead of you and you thought, yeah, this is it. And so you left whatever you are doing. You stopped tending to your grass and went to tend to somebody else's grass or patch of grass because they, they, are, they are doing it. It's, it seems easy. I can do this too. They are thriving. Maybe this is it for me. Do you, do you have something like that? Um, trying to think about it. I think there are many, but I can't really get one right now. Uh -huh. But I'm just going to talk about the overview about it. Yeah. Like uh, this common, it's a cliche thing, that cliche statement that is always thrown there. Like uh, grass is always green on the other side. So we're always racing to get the greener side, the greener pastures. I'm going to co connect this example with something that he, he mentioned about. Having, for instance, if I, for, let me just ma make up a story right now, uh, uh, an image that we can use for this program. So if you are, I see you with a car. I see you with, uh, with a good lady, a good, in, let's say your wife, in quotes, in, in future. I see everything working out for you well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bro, where did you just go? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> like, oh. It's a prophecy for ah. you. Yes, man of God. Oh man. Speak into my life. <laughs> Speak into my life, man. Go deeper, in fact. Ah. Yeah. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen to that. Okay, so for instance, if everything is going well based on how I see life through your, your lenses, and maybe I'm trying out something. But I find that my way is, most of the time, is usually based on time. Like, my, my, time, my time seems like it's ticking faster than yours. So I need to redeem time through what you're doing. So I come and ask you, uh, what do you do? Or I know what you're doing. So I start doing what you do with, 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 with leaving out what, leaving out what I, I, I was doing. Because I think that you are... You are the thing that you're doing is actually going to take me to what I see, the result. But the truth of the matter is, comparison does not carry with it its process. 
most of the times when we compare results, we compare results based on where we are. But the person might have started 50 years ago or maybe 20 years ago. So the, when we're compare, comparing people, the process is never carried to the table. It's something that is always overlooked. Mm -hmm. So I might start your thing, but I'll end up wasting a lot of time and I'll never get to that place. Yeah. Because it is not just based on the result. The result is what we see, but it is based on an accumulation of something that you've been doing for a long time. So I might have, me, I might have left my gold mine. Like I think we have seen this meme where there is this guy who's uh, an achimba, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. they are going for diamond. Yeah. Then uh, for, he, for, for his side, he has so, there are so many diamonds at the end of it all. Mm -hmm. Then this guy just gets one and anachana na yake and enda ko home mwingine. So that's the same thing. Like our process is supposed to like take us to our results, like our pure and authentic results. J just as you say that our purpose is in it. Like there is something about it that is very clean and unique that can't be compared to anything mm. else. So comparison, yeah, I've remembered. Like yeah. I wanted to be like Michael Jackson, yeah. for, for sure and for, for hey, sure. bro, for sure. sawa. <laughs> eh? But uh, <laughs> let's just say, uh, Saizi ni Najita James Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> JJ. <But> anyway, <laughs> I'm just creating my own thing. I'm on my own path and I'm I'm trying to understand why you would want to be like Michael Jackson, maybe just for clarity. Please, not white. For people. Ah. You know, not no, yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just misconceptions. You know, we're just trying to answer. Oh, all right. Why, why, why Michael Jackson? What area of the uh, Area of dance. Like oh. purely dance. Ah. Okay. About art. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, like he, he da we all know he's a good dancer. Okay. Yeah, he was a good dancer. Yeah. Okay. So, like, let, back to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Like, when we compare other people, uh, if me. For instance, if I compared myself at five years old, I want to be like Michael Jackson at where he is, then it means I am not really co uh, seeing the, the reason of his papa, his process, like the process that he took to get to that point. So papa's is a work of pro process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a work of process. Yeah. Wow. And essentially, I think just so just stick to tending your own grass. Yeah. I think I like that example of the meme that you gave. I, I mean, note to then you need to put that to find that image is going to come to your screen in a few minutes. You know, yeah. Just, uh, you know, that's I think that's a really powerful message just to stick to tend to your own grass. Because we're such creatures of comparison. I want I, I see you itching to get <laughs> onto that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to give you a, a chance to jump onto that as well. Mm. Um, Okay, I, I'm going to try and um, paint a picture with a real life experience. Um, so when I was in class five, um, I used to go to a school called Ivy School. So um, there was the director's kid. He came back from, I don't know, he was studying in a different school and then he came. So he had a really good handwriting. Um, and I had a, a handwriting. His was good, mine was just a handwriting. Yep. All right. <coughs> While I'm about to sign in checks, hallelujah. Ah. We just sign checks, you know. Nice and save. Nice save. And writing. Nice uh, save. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, of course, because the fact he came from, I do, you don't know where he's like an alien. His name was Miles, Miles Mugo. So I was looking at his handwriting, and I'm like, man, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to become, so this is the first process of me becoming Miles. But, and the, the other thing is, me, when I go comparison, I go full on. I want to become like you in every way. It doesn't matter if you have a mustache and I don't. I want to have a mustache now. Now that I'm comparing myself to you. So, Miles was light. Um, yeah, and I'm dark. You, so... <laughs> ah, anyway. Um, moving on swiftly. So, I, I, I copied his handwriting. You know, like, it became almost like his... You see, that's the thing about comparison. You'll never become it. You, you'll always be second to that person. Because that person is doing their best. You, you're just becoming second. So they are thriving in their field. So you'll always be number two. It doesn't matter if they are failing. You'll be number two in their field. So that's the thing. It was almost like his. And then now, tragic, tragedy. We, I, I got, uh, we shifted. We, we came, we, it was in Maziwa. The school was in Maziwa. So we went to um, Zimmerman. We relocated to Zimmerman. So I had to go to Cornerstone Academy. 
So devastation. I was like, man, so now what is going to happen? He was my model. And now I'm here with all these creepy dudes. <laughs> I, I have no one else to emulate. So there was devastation. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, when that person is out of this world, and probably they're just videos like MJ, but still, you, won't be, you, you can only be inspired by someone to be the best version of yourself, but you can never be them. The journey of you trying to be like them, <laughs> something might happen along the road and it's going to be bad. So um, a better true north is God. You know, you can always rely on God. Come rain or shine. I've not said you compare yourself to God, but rely on him. You know, yeah, because now with him, oh, <laughs> enough said. You've taken us right into it because... The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created, um, of course, the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and, you know, the darkness was covering the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering of the waters, and so on and so forth. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, essentially starts by saying, in the beginning, God created. And so it introduces to us God as a creative, as somebody who sits above the circle of the earth, as the Bible of, uh, in the book of Job describes him, seated above the circle of the earth, just putting things together, making things be. So he created the things that we needed, and then he created us. The Bible says male and female, he created them. Or man and woman, he created them. So God has introduced the idea of himself being the source and the sustainer of all things. Why sustainer? Because he has put the things we need before he puts us here. Yeah? So he's the source and sustainer of all things. Um, the same narrative continues to be carried out through scripture. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says, For we are his workmanship. And the word there as it renders um, is, is, um, is like a great poetic work. We are his great, it's like we are his great work of art. We are his masterpiece. That's actually it. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared for us long before we were born. So the parts which we are supposed to take, I think the word would be mapito in Swahili, the parts we are supposed to take have been carefully scripted, outlined, crafted by God himself. And then First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, also another favorite, says, um, we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's holy nation. Um, and the reason for all these things, or the purpose for those things, for us being called those things, is that we may be able to tell the works of him who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Throughout scripture, and so on and so forth, um, even in Revelation, right to the end, him saying that how we have been called or made to be um, uh, kings and priests unto our God, uh, you know, it continues, the narrative continues to carry right from Genesis chapter 1, all the way through to the end in Revelation, God standing out as the source and the sustainer of all things. That, of course, coming hot on the heels of what you've just said, that you cannot try to um, reach purpose outside of God. You cannot get your purpose outside of God. I want to take just a few moments and speak to the folly of that, to the folly of um, trying to find the area, of, trying to find our why. We said that's the reason. Trying to find our reason. But just before we do that, I want us to take a short, quick commercial break so that our sponsors, our sponsors can do the thing. We're going to take a short break. Please do not go far. Get a glass of water or something healthy. Uh, stretch yourself. And then we're going to be right back in a moment. We have branded merchandise for the theme of the year 2022, The Great Catch. To order, kindly send your size and the color of your preference to the number on your screen. The t-shirt goes for 700 shillings and the hoodie for 2,350 shillings. Oh man, it's amazing. This year, the Harvest Conference comes early in April 2022. But wait, 
there's more. Our conference is coming to us from the 3rd of April through to the 8th of April. I am so excited. And in this year of the Great Catch, we are bringing it back. Yes, we are going to be having boarding delegates as well as day delegates. Having had the good news that Harvest Conference comes early this year, that is 3rd to the 8th of April, I am here to let you know that registration is ongoing. That is 1,000 Kenyan shillings for the day delegates and 2,500 for the boarding delegates. You'd want to pass by the registration desk to register as well as grab yourself the great catch sticker at 100 Kenyan shillings. I for sure will be there. I'll be looking forward to seeing you there. This year we are coming all the way back. All those things that we've not had the opportunity to do in about two years, we would love to do them right this time. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be having theme exposition every morning. And then we are bringing the Harvest Conversations live and direct to you in the mid-morning sessions, talking about real issues that affect the young believer. We're also going to be having great workshops in the afternoon, talking about things that surround us in our everyday life. And in the evenings, we're going to have a wonderful time of revival in the presence of God. Our activities, our days are power packed and I really don't know why anyone would want to miss this. See you there! I for sure will be there. I'm counting on seeing you there. We have amazing stuff lined up for you. It would be such a shame to have you miss out on any one of them. For more information, follow us on our social media platforms. That is Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, and Podcast for daily encouragement and updates. Welcome back. It's good for you and for us that we are still back together. As you have seen, our Harvest Conference is coming right up. In a few more days, we're going to be live coming to you from Deliverance Church International, Kasarani in Zimmerman for the 7th Annual Harvest Conference 2022. <laughs> and we are so excited about that. So please plug in. If you still haven't, register for that. All our day sessions, if you'd like to be a day delegate, uh, inclusive of meals, 1,500 shillings, 1,000 shillings, sorry, 1,000 shillings for our day delegates. But for all our boarding delegates, it's 2,500 Bob only. That includes your meal and your accommodation for throughout the whole week. Start on the third Sunday, the third, go all the way to Friday. The eighth is going to be a grand time. This year is the catch edition from Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. We are all about the Great Commission. Go ye into the world. And this is our small contribution into going out. This is our way of going out, okay? So we're coming right to you. Back on set with me, we're talking about purpose. Remember, this is a season. Talking about purpose and on set with me, I have Ian Gatere and I have James Kimani. Sometimes I forget his name is actually James, his government name. Because I'd say his name is Kimani Kimu or Kimani Gitao. <laughs> but James Kimani, uh, also known as Kimu, with us in this place. Just before we took the break, we were looking at um, trying to find your purpose outside of God. We looked at God as the source and the sustainer of all things, from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, uh, from Revelation. We looked at examples from everywhere throughout the Bible. And God himself, introducing himself for the very first time we see God, we see him as a creator, as the creator, the source and the sustainer of all things. And so we know that purpose comes directly from God. So I want to speak about that. I want to allow you to get into that. Maybe we'll start with Kimu. Um, maybe to just talk about the futility of trying to find purpose outside of God. Okay. Uh, so the futility of, find, of trying to find your purpose outside God. Mm -hmm. Like, f just as you said, let me, allow me to just take back what you've said. Uh, you've said that in the beginning God created so meaning that if he created everything, he is the one who created your purpose. Because there is no way you can create an object without its functionalities. Like the conditions of it to ac accomplish 
the, the task is deep inside, it's programmed. So meaning everything that we have is deep inside of us. But for our control and everything that we need for it to accomplish is based on somebody who already placed it there. And it's the creator that knows the product that is created. So with, with, with that in mind, uh, trying to get your purpose or trying to achieve your purpose without God is quite hard. What will end up, uh, maybe two scenarios might end up. <coughs> thought, sorry, excuse me. It might end up with two scenarios. The first of the scenario is you are looking for something that you are going to accomplish for you to term it up as a purpose. You might do the easiest thing that is not yours. Like you can just get money and you will think that now because I have this amount of money in my bank account, like a goal, now I, have, I think I've achieved my purpose. But in the records of God, is that truly what you are actually created to do? Because you can actually set your own targets here on earth. But in the records, was, was that really what God created you to do? So that's the first scenario. The second scenario that you can actually have is that you are out here trying to, trying to please people. Like you have a people, people's pleaser. Whatever, like for instance, if I see you driving, uh, if, I, if you see me driving a nice car, that, that thing that comes to you and how I see you, your face glowing up or whatever is happening, like I'm seeing something good, you, you're really appreciating the steps that I'm making, that can actually be a purpose to someone. You can actually just do that to try and set a goal or set yourself up for you to be winning, but actually that's not the truth. So working without God tends to play tends to take us to a place that we now are gods. We start creating our own goals and our own purposes. That might not be the truth. So it's a futile journey trying to actually get your purpose without God. Let me just tell, let me just tell you, come on here somebody, let me just tell you, there's something that you said there that just because you're good at something does not mean that that is your purpose. However, I mean to paraphrase, however, when something is your purpose, you're most probably going to be good at it. And that is such a profound statement. It's so deep, man, that if you're trying to find your purpose without God, it's very futile because we turn ourselves into gods, small g, um, because we are trying to give ourselves out of the futility of our minds and the smallness of our you know, thinking, we think, oh, I'm good at this thing. This thing is probably my purpose. Let me go al along with it. It, it. it might be one of the, what do we used to, what did we call them? The, the small, no, the things that, the, uh, the small piece of a jigsaw puzzle of your purpose might be a small piece, but it's not it. So for you to get the whole image, or the whole picture of the jigsaw puzzle, you have to go through God. That's so, ow. Ian, na kuwanda ukifanya hivi. Ni nafanya nini? Uko tayari. Niko tayari. It's because I want to say something yeah. about that point. What we're doing is not we are we are not downplaying your role mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. living out your purpose. You are supposed. There are things that you definitely have to do. You know, like waking up in the morning. Yeah, you you are woken up. You find out that you're awake. Yeah but you have to get out of bed, you know. You know, there are things that you have to do. Still planning and all of those things, you have to do those. Um, you can't, Sasa God, usukani. There is your role. That's what I, I, I want to, I'm very keen on that, you know, um, because I found myself in that space. Uh, you, you still, the, what is expected of you, you have to do it. Have to do. Yes. Have to do play your part. Just because purpose is, is of God, or we find it in God, does not mean that now we do nothing, we just levitate through life. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. And, uh, and you don't even walk. You know, like on Sunday we were being uh, preached to by one of our preachers, uh, Pastor Kibera, and he was saying that Christians are termed as one of the laziest people. And I was, man, that's such a bad CV. I know. What? You're always in cashes and what not. Okay, I don't have a problem with cashers, you know. But, you, you know, we, we, we've become complacent. You think that God is going to sort out everything. No! I don't want to say what I wanted to say, but there are things that you just do. When you are hungry, 
you just go and cook a meal you know when you're full you know what you're supposed to do <laughs> yeah so that's what i'm trying to say that your role you have to play it and play it to the best so that even god will bless your best you know wow that, that uh, you've actually taken me back to that because I, i wanted to borrow from that um the, the teaching on work and i'm i'm glad you brought it up you can find that teaching just uh on this same page you can go back and look for a sermon called work work by pastor david kibera um as 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 just to borrow from from what you've said um again borrowing from that teaching uh it means then as we are finding our purpose inside of god you've said correctly that there is our part to play and our part to play must be played correctly all right with diligence mm. we have to put our backs into it yes just because it's purpose does not mean it's going to be easy i think that's what i'm yeah yeah, yeah. for sure i want to borrow from some of the areas of our, our own lives in this place um do you are, are you on the journey of finding your purpose um I'll throw that question to both of you. Um are you on the journey of finding your purpose? Do you think you found it and and what Okay, let's first answer that question. Are you on the journey? Are you have you found it or have you absolutely no idea couldn't <laughs> know if it touched you in the morning you wouldn't know. Uh, where 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 do you stand on this whole spectrum of what purpose is? Uh so uh, let me allow him to start. <laughs> All right. Yeah yeah. Uh, you know when it goes this way there is nobody else so i got i got to take this man <laughs> uh okay what i would say is um what i've realized about purpose and we have alluded to it even as we are coming to here um my purpose i've realized it's more of a journey it's not a destination and the doing is what the purpose is you know um uh, i'm a big fan of uh, i think we can mention these people you know uh he's a movie star he's will smith um he he once said that his mission statement is improving lives so borrowing from that you can see that he's not going it's not something that he's going to do once i've improved that life and it's it's improving lives you know so it's continuous present continuous, present continuous. so it's um if your purpose is entertaining people it's entertaining people it's not entertain people and then go home no it's continuous so what i'm trying to say is um what i've realized about my purpose is that it's something that i'm going to be doing for a long time and incidentally purpose is something you love doing steve harvey usually says i, I listen to a lot of these people so pardon me if <laughs> they they come up a lot but He says that if it's Monday morning and you're not happy then you're not in your purpose. And you're like, "Oh man, it's Monday, we're starting the week. You are not in your purpose, man. You're not." So, um it's something that you love doing and you're going to be doing it continuously. So, like for me, I've, um it's in the area of um just optimizing. I I love being around people structures so basically just making better wherever i am you know and also entertaining at the same time you yeah, so that that's uh, i think also purpose you go um gradually gradually um finding out what it is or i don't know maybe upgrading it yeah purpose 1.0 purpose 2.0 you know because you realize you know it's like realizing why this is why you you realize that it's intertwined so you couple it and you move on forward with it so yeah that's why i'm saying it's like upgrading so so far yeah in the area of optimization and entertaining that's where i am putting in the work so if there's upgrading there's putting in the work all right so yes you you have found it you're in that place mm -hmm. but it is like the work of sanctification for the believer you are sanctified yeah. you are being sanctified mm -hmm. and you will be sanctified yes in the end. so it's 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 work it's a it's a work in progress yes yes yeah. yes yes wow Kimu. so uh i'm also in my uh found my purpose but i it's not complete like as we said it's all about starting 
like when you start is that's when you're going to realize if actually this is something that I have been called to do or is something that I'm just giving myself excuses to do so I'm still I'm still finding out but at least I know where I'm suppo- I know the, the right directions to take uh, with the guidance of the Lord so I'm in my journey about finding out uh, more about my purpose like it's getting clearer as he said it's all about it's something that is progressive it's gradually taken a step at a time you can only do what you can hold you can't do everything like for instance if we take an example of what he says about Steve Harvey like there is something that i can act- actually do about maybe something that he says but i can't really do exactly what he does like f- like how how he has made himself w- w- uh, to get to that point i can't really actualize it or do it right now in semesaizi okay I just want to have his suits in my closet i don't even have that money for instance like how can they actually just be there in my closet so it's something that you do with time understanding that actually they are there because uh, there's something that they did to get there and it takes time it takes time so uh, i'm not in a rush to get to my purpose but i know the best feeling that i have is every day i'm doing something that i did not do yesterday comparing myself to who i was yesterday in regards to where i'm going so i'm in the journey of getting to my purpose what i what i hear from him again is journey it's process it's a process um as as you're seeking to find your purpose in god even as you find it you realize there's still more ground for you to cover um i i i i constantly think about whenever i think about purpose i think about jesus christ who we learn from our lord and savior uh, the bible talks about he actually quotes um the words of the prophet isaiah in luke chapter 4 verse 18 he's saying the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to and then he gives his what i call his mission statement but also you know is lighting out his purpose he has anointed me to heal yeah. the sick and to preach the gospel to the broken hearted and to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and so on and so forth look for 418 and onwards and i think he has come to seek and save the lost because he knows the end from the beginning and his purpose shall stand from where he's standing at the end of eternity he has already saved the whole world from where we are standing he has saved the world he is saving the world right now because there are still people coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and there are people who will still be saved all of us actually in the very end when all is said and done and so the purpose of Jesus continues to be carried out it really is a work in prog- progress just because he walked the earth what we call a thousand, uh, 2000 years ago just before he just because he did it for those 33 years that he was here does not mean that okay he came did his job and finished I actually want to throw a spanner in the works right there a bit carefully and just say purpose then outlives you. Oh. I think yes it does. Because if you continue to upgrade and to improve and to make yourself better and to seek out partnerships then even when you're gone the work continues you quoted someone and said um his job is improving lives was that it improving lives yeah yeah will smith improving lives and you said you know if it's improving lives it, it does you don't improve one life and you're done yeah, yeah. you continue mm-hmm. to do it you mentioned about steve harvey and i want to believe that after he's done the work does not stop there after he's gone even though he hosts the show there are many other people that will continue to benefit from some of the structures that have been put in place and i think for the rest of us now that are here talking about entertainment talking about impacting lives in one way or the other even just putting a smile on somebody's face one yeah. at a time that's a continuous work and i think that's such a a powerful place um to be uh to even just put a pause in it just as we take quick pack uh, parting shots because i'm i'm told i'm told my time is up just as we as we take quick part, part parting parting shots mm. for this part one because we we are not yet done we haven't even begun to scratch the surface oh, we man. are going to come back i want to bring these two guys back again uh, <laughs> next week and just build a little bit on that um what would you say to somebody who is out there that's joining us today and um just for the simple reason that they may not, they might not be able to wait until next week what would you say to somebody who is um right now in the place of seeking their purpose they haven't even found it yet they're in the place of seeking their purpose what would you say to them where do they start where do they start looking 
what would you say to them in just a few in just a few moments and then we're going to call it a wrap i look to that camera you that you can look at that camera okay so hi hi there <laughs> uh what i could say for somebody who's actually trying to look out for their purpose like they are starting the journey of finding their purpose the first thing is the very fact that you ask yourself each and every single question about what you are supposed to do in this world is the first and the best place you can start because that brings awareness you know that you're not comfortable to at where you are at at that particular moment in time so the second thing is you just start do anything like that's a word that we've kept on throwing here but you need to do that just start start with something that you use that you love like what he said uh, it's something that sticks inside of you you know those things that you love and however dumb they may seem they are not dumb in your eyes and they are not dumb in god's eyes you just start then you're going to know about it as you progress if it's something that actually you picked up that was not the truth you are just going to drop it with time but one thing i will tell you is the thing the area that you've selected please study and study and study well like the thing there is this scripture in in proverbs that i do love Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 it says uh seest a uh, seest a man who's diligent at his work he will not stand before obscure men but will stand before kings and that just tells you that there is something that goes hand there, there is something that actually comes out in diligence when you diligently do something when you diligently seek your purpose for sure you will diligently get your purpose so you just start find it and find also people you can you can work with and talk to concerning the particular matter like for instance if you are page instagram we are all in social media social uh, instagram facebook tiktok or whatsoever those places that you are in connected socially just follow the people who actually do that thing that you want to know how to do and slowly by slowly it start making sense then eventually this is the, the, the icing on the cake keep on praying pray about it because we are saying that God is the sustainer he is the creator then he is the one who actually will give you the right guidance to exactly how you need to execute your purpose thank you wow that's that's very practical thank you um I want to give you the opportunity Gatera to do the same and speak just some hope to someone that's uh catching us right now and they have the same question like okay together with what Kimu has said what can i do All right and he has said quite a lot you know he's saying uh, he looks up to me you can't say that again man bro <laughs> you you are making me look like hey pressure but you know it's sort of codependent you know because there are areas where he's really good and i really look up to him as well so he said a lot um even say everything um and in the sense of just saying how we've talked about uh purpose is all about it out living you jesus was the best person to exemplify that nobody on earth right now has died and 2000 years later people are still believing in what he was doing so jesus is the perfect example of purpose out living you so he's the only one you can look to first of all just know that he is the only one that you can look to if you want your purpose to out live you you know because he 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 did it and he did it and we are here and we believe in him and we are you know so journeys just following his example um for the parting shot now uh, what i would say is uh, i'll borrow from uh, the late dr miles munro he had a set of five questions which i think are going to be of assistance to anyone who is at home so the first question that you need to ask yourself is who am i you need to know yourself your identity who are you and i would suggest that you ask yourself these five questions when you're just alone away from social media just quiet down everything in this noisy world and find it from the core of your being to answer these questions so who am i who are you your identity and number 2 where did i come from where is your source that's why you're talking about jesus and god because that's our source so where is your source and then number 3 what can i do no why am i here why am i here so what is your purpose now you know yourself you know your identity and you know your source so why are you here now that you know who you are and where you came from so why are you here 
And then number four, what is your potential? What can you do? What can I do? And then the fifth and the last question is, where am I headed? Where is your destiny? What is your destination? So ask yourself those five questions and I believe they are going to help you to realize your true purpose. Thank you. Wow. Such PowerPoints, yani if if you can do those things, I'm sure you you're not going to be going around, you know, running around. Because I know it's very frustrating, especially when you're in the place that Kim is saying, now you have the question in the back and the front of your mind. It's the only thing that pervades your mind now. What am I here for? Um, do those things, learn from other people, uh, read, ask, be inquisitive. Somebody says, stay hungry, stay hungry. If you're looking for purpose, you have to stay hungry, um, keep looking around. I remember in my earlier days reading the book um, Purpose Driven, uh, The Purpose Driven Life by Pastor Rick Warren, um, ask, answering the question, what on earth am I here for? You know, just just trying to just trying just trying to understand, and yeah. I mean that's also a, a good place maybe for you to to look into. But pray, pray at all times. I'm glad that both of them have said, "Look to Jesus, yeah. look to Jesus." The Bible says they looked to him, and their faces were radiant with light, and they were not put to shame. That right about now brings us to the end of this part one. We want to bring these two gentlemen again next Monday, so that we can just come and talk about purpose again. And then this time we're just going to be looking at, is it possible now, having found my purpose, is it possible for me to turn my purpose uh, into, to turn my passion into profit? Is that possible? Is it doable? Can we do it? What do you think? Because I think we can. Let us know, send in your questions throughout. Let us know how we may be able to answer them or questions that you have concerning this and more of our topics or what you think we need to add on as we continue to have real authentic bold, raw conversations concerning issues and topics that surround or concern the youthful believer. My name is Brian Mashigadi, and with me on set, I've had Ian Gatere and James Kimani. This is Harvest Conversation. See you next time. God bless.